Now, President Ekufuado is deploying more resources to Ghana's border with neighboring Burkina Faso to ensure the country does not become the battleground for terrorist activities. Already, Ghana and some West African countries have set up a military standby force to fight the insurgents. He is confident only a strong collaboration between the citizens and the security agencies can help defeat the insurgents who have prioritized Ghana as the next target of attacks. The president was addressing a visiting United States of America Congress Committee on Foreign Relations. Issue of security is, and we're doing so by, I think, now accepted combination of measures where, whereby, apart from stepping up the security response, so now we've got on our borders, uh, forward operating bases of our armed forces, which are being built up a little bit too slowly for my liking. But then that's largely a question of means uh, on our northern border. We're also undertaking these, the socioeconomic interventions that are equally important in providing some hope for the populations along the border areas so that the recruitment of young, idle people uh, by, by, by the jihadists is something that is lessened. It's an ongoing uh, battle, if you like, struggle, but it is one we're determined to win because we want to make sure that this country continues to be a beacon of stability, a beacon of peace, and, and, and also, as I said, of democratic engagement in, in, in our part of the world. So these are some of the, 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 the major preoccupations that we have had. And as a result of our, our thoughts on this and the, and, the, and the efforts we made to interest some of our, our neighbors, we came up with the Accra Initiative. And the Accra Initiative initially grouped together the, the, neighboring, the immediate neighboring nations, Benin, Togo, Burkina Faso, Ghana, Côte d'Ivoire, together in a, in a defense and security sharing system so that we can heighten our capacity to try and master in common this, this jihadist threat. It's turned out to be a very uh, progressive and very uh, valuable step that was taken. So who are the insurgents and where do they come from? President Ekufado has been providing some answers. The West African region, which a few years ago was thought to be a haven of stability and democratic engagement in the, on the continent, is now seriously challenged. And the challenge emanates from the jihadist insurrection that found root in Mali. With the downfall of uh, Muammar Gaddafi, it transpired that many of the uh, insurgents, warriors, jihadist warriors, who had been driven out by you, by you from the Middle East, from Iraq, to some extent from Afghanistan, found themselves in Libya. And when Gaddafi fell, both they and their arms crossed the Sahara and found refuge in the northern parts of Mali. That's over 10, nearly 10 years ago. And since then, have been systematically waging a war in Mali, which is now spread across the entire Sahel, Niger, Burkina Faso, and is now also coming southwards. We've had terrorist outrages in, uh, in Togo, which is our eastern neighbor. We've had terrorist outrages in Côte d'Ivoire, which is our western nation, and Burkina Faso, which is our northern, border, our northern neighbor, is now almost the epicenter, apart from Mali, of the jihadist insurrection in West. Now let's broaden the discussion about these measures being adopted and speak to a security analyst on this. Richard Kumado is a security consultant and joins us on phone. Thank you so much for joining us. Now we seem to focus a lot on our entry point with Burkina Faso. What makes that border so vulnerable? Uh, is, there, is the stretch of the border and the nature of activity around the border. What we would need to do is that the threat we are dealing with is both regional and global, and we will need a superior security management strategy, particularly along our borderlines, if you want to make that place 
as one of the key areas of red flags you want to pick. So definitely the Burkina Faso border, as the president alluded, has become a, a safe haven for people who are engaged in the business of terrorism. And so that is what you are saying. Mm. Now, who does a standby military force against terrorism benefit most? Ghana or the other countries in the sub-region who have had attacks already? No, definitely it's a cross-border and a, a cross-national national responsibility sharing. And what we will need to do is that in fighting terrorism, we have to be mindful of the fact that if your strategies are not superior, these guys are well determined to take on the state. And we will need a collaborative, as the president alludes. But my only worry or my only uh, suggestive recommendation is that some of these uh, collaborations should be both horizontal and vertical. And in that way, we will not only build capacity, but we'll have the ability to deal with the threat of terrorism effectively and precisely as possible. Other than that, we have a long fight. For those of us who are not uh, security inclined, you mentioned horizontal and vertical. What does that mean, really? We need to be broadening it a little bit. You will need a private sector. You see, what, one of the things collaboration does is that it puts at your disposal aspects and expertise from other places. And you will need both the private sector, the state operators, and the general public or the citizens along the border predominantly, those who are far and those who are in close proximity. Other than that, you might be hitting wrong targets with wrong bullets, and the element of surprise might take you off. Mm. Now, Ghanaians ordinarily fear the military and feel the police are out to get them. The president is also encouraging collaboration between citizens and the security agencies to fight insurgents. How can the existing gap be bridged? Now, I think our approach has been a little bad for some time now. We will need to be progressive. If we never had a problem using the military and the police at the same time. I think the arrangement and streamline the operations is where we have the challenges. And we are talking about the threat of terrorism. Uh, the military have a standby force for anti-terrorism. The police have it. What they need to do is to collaborate at that highest level of national security management. And mm -hmm. once that is done, with a little bit of intelligence gathering at the focal points along the borders, we'll be fine. Other than that, uh, we have to be watchful of how dreadful it can be when the element of surprise happens. But that is within the, t t the security agencies. What about b b bridging the gap between the citizens and the security agencies? Remember, Ghanaians ordinarily fear the, the, the military. They also feel that the police are out after them. So how do we bridge the gap between these two security agencies and the citizens? Take one of the strategies of uh, Dampari and adapt it. Public engagement, number one. Number two is providing security awareness or what we call uh, security education. Then number three, carry the fear and address the anxiety of the general public. And we will encourage our men and women in uniform, particularly the green uniform, to be a bit more circumspect, to be disciplined, and to play by the rules. And once they can do these three things at the same time, which is not difficult for them to do because it's part of the trainings we have anyway, it brings everybody along, particularly the media, and some key people who are stakeholders, who are civilians, that you might need their critical input at all times when it comes to dealing with crime and the dangerous one as terrorism we are talking about. Richard Kumado is a security consultant. Thank you so much for finding time to join us. Now, moving on.